Hi, this is a brief overview of two Node.cg elements, the scoreboard you see above me in the middle, and this little lower third that you can see on the left. Now, I've just named that lower bit Twitter. You can name it anything you want, subheading, and you can put it as like a host or something like that. And the scoreboard works by just pressing these buttons and then go up. Um, they don't have a way to go down, but you can implement that functionality. It's very simple. So Node.cg, just a brief introduction, is a on-screen graphics framework and application that handles a dashboard. So this is the dashboard you see. We've written the um, little two panels here. They also hold graphics. So all the graphics you would load would be in here. I could have added the scoreboard and the lower third onto one, but I didn't. I'm just might close that on here. And now you can see that they've closed, so it's automatically updating. And it also holds uh, server-side scripts, which are called extensions, but we can't see that. And this doesn't use any because it's very simple. If you want to go into like APIs or stuff, or then you would go into those. Also handles things like sounds. We won't be using any of those, but they're very nice. And if you want to install Node.cg, just go to the website, node.cg.com or the GitHub, and just copy these, or not copy, but like just follow these instructions. Anyway, so I'll just go over how the dashboards are laid out. So the HTML is very simple. It's just span elements so I can put words in, name and Twitter, and two uh, text inputs with the ID, name and Twitter, a button, sorry, and a script. So the script is just gets the elements, the input elements from the name and Twitter, and creates a, and when we press the button, it creates a object called data which is um, the property's name and Twitter, which holds the what we've put in there. And it then Node.cg then sends the message, sends a message called show lower third. This could be anything you want, as long as the other end, which is a listen for function, um, is also has the same name. And we also send the data. Uh, send messages, I like to think of them a bit like functions. So you don't change them all the time, but like, you just call them and go across servers, other uh, extensions and graphics. And if you need it on dashboard as well, we'll go through dashboard. The scoreboard works a little bit uh, differently. So you, we have two buttons here, team one, team two, in the script. And we have replicants and replicants are like the variables for the functions or not for the functions. Like you have functions and variables and we've just called the variables or replicants as they're called, team one and team two we've set up a default value of zero. You can see the that that's an optional value, so we could have just left it as that, except we want a default value. So if you want to see all the options you can put on a replicant, just go down to the Node.cg documentation, click replicants, and we can see here the name, name of the replicant, namespace. So if you need to be a bit specific in which bundles, so the groups of things, groups of like layouts are called bundles, um, if you need to be specific, you don't really have to be, but sometimes you do, you would put that there. And then here are the different options. So default value you've seen. Persistent is um, if Node.cg, if you close Node.cg or Node.cg crashes, uh, it'll keep all the variables and replicants, sorry. That's by default on true. So if you close it and restart it and all the replicants are the same, it's because it's default to keep the same. Persistence interval, I'm not exactly sure what that is. And schema path is something, so all the data is always the same. You create a little JSON schema. It's just so when you change some data, it's not completely flipping out. So TypeScript is very good with that as well. And to change the value is we literally just call, get the team rep, team one rep. I just like putting rep at the end of replicants get the value and just plus plus. If we wanted to plus it by six, you would just do this. Since we're just adding one, we can just do plus plus. You can put any form of data in your replicants. If it goes in a JavaScript variable, it goes in a team one. It goes in a replicant. So, so that's the dashboards. We'll go over to the graphics side of things now. And so I'll just start with the scoreboard. So I'll get the scoreboard back up. There she is. So I'll just get the three files. So the scoreboard HTML, it's very simple. It's actually going to 
look almost the exact same as the lower third but we basically have like a parent element so we can move it around called scoreboard and then two more divs um, with the class of score since they both share different um, uh, similar uh, CSS attributes and an ID to get them. The divider in the middle is actually just done through CSS but if you wanted to add another div called divider or something, you absolutely could. We also for both of these will be uh, linking the font from Google's um, fonts API. Uh, I would, if I was doing this in natural production, have them loaded locally, have them downloaded and then get them locally just so I'm not reaching out for something I could just have locally. So I'll just go over what's, what's uh, actually no, the, the animation is on the other one. So we can go over here. So it's very simple as you can see. So we just got those two replicants get the two elements and when the replicant is on change. So that's how you detect when a replicant changes is just this here. And of course, close it. Um, you get the new value. Um, so most of the time, if you look at other bundles, it'll be called new val. You might also see something like this as well, old val. And that's just the previous value that was updated. Um, but so if you need to compare from now before you can, and we just say team one dot in a HTML, put in the number and that's all it is. And it's just the same for the team two and the CSS. It's very simple. So the, the background, don't worry about that. That's for when I'm designing it and checking it on Chrome or on edge now. So if I, if I click on scoreboard here, you can see the background's black, but on OBS that it removes it automatically. So we set the font and we set the scoreboard to be flex. So it's just like always going to be next to each other. I've used flex a lot. I absolutely love it. Um, position absolutes. Um, so we can put it in your, the screen size is only going to be whatever you're streaming at or recording at, which is whatever really. So you can use absolute values. Um, 20 pixels down and these two lines are so it's centered perfectly. Uh, so the score, so both of the score boxes have these, both of these um, attributes. So font uh, color white, font size to be 60 pixels. The boxes themselves are also set to be 80 pixels high and wide. This is all just stuff I looked at design, said that looks good. And these two handle the text centering. So text align uh, is the horizontal centering and line height is the vertical centering. And then team one just has a background of orange. Team two has a background of blue and the border radius is those uh, curved edges, curved corners, sorry. And so there, there's a lot of numbers because we don't want the corners that are touching each other to be curved. We want them just to be straight. So it's, this is like top left, top right, bottom right, top, uh, bottom left. And just same thing for that. And the border um, on the right is just on team one. I could have had it on team two and it would have been border left. It's just what I went with. And the reason this is 82 pixels is because this is 80 and half of four is two. And so I need to put 82. If I just had negative 80, it'd be four pixels off. And I'm a perfectionist. So that's the scoreboard. So that's all done. So I'll get the red flash was there because I have my, the background set as, um, background set as red, but of course you don't see it. Um, I think it might be a little bit wider when I show you this. Oh no, that's all good. So that's just a reminder of what it is. And it actually looks, the only thing that's different between these two between lower third and scoreboards HTML is literally just what I've called these things. I actually noticed this when I was recording. Um, and I was like, oh, they actually are the exact same. Again, we're, oh yeah, we're also importing the style sheet. Remember that? All this stuff you don't really need. It's just what's, when you type in exclamation mark, enter, it's just what comes up. And of course, importing the font. So we just have the parent element two spans. I've gone with spans instead of divs. You could go with anything you want. And of course the IDs and the 
text to get them. Um, type module down here basically means we're importing something. This is for the animation, so I'll go over that um, in a bit. I'll just go over the static, what we need for static stuff um, first. So for the static stuff, all you'll need is to listen for the command we sent and to get the data. And then we just set the data. So I could have set this as new val or something like that. And then these two would have to be changed to new val. And then that'd be how it works. But so you can have them any name you want. And so these just get the elements from here and just the inner HTML as those, as what we sent over. It's very simple. Uh, what gets more complex is when we start using animations. So GSAP is, stands for Green Sock Animation Platform. I learned it from looking at the Games Done Quick uh, bundles. So you can, they're open source as well, those Games Done Quick bundles. Uh, the most recent one wasn't. I think it's because they're changing a bunch of stuff and they're not happy with releasing it yet. Uh, so hopefully the next one is. And I'll be going over a few overviews on how that works because I absolutely, that's what got me into this. And so to install um, GSAP, you would have typed in npm install GSAP and it would load into the modules here. And what we do is we create a timeline. So a timeline is just a set of animations we line up and then they just play through one and off or another. Um, in older versions, literally two weeks ago, this was changed. Um, you would have seen, if you look at older bundles, it's called like timeline light, timeline max, tween light, tween max. Uh, it's just a, it's just been more simplified now and threw me so far off when I started using it. I was like, what's happening? So the, since we want the text to be the same size, uh, the, the box behind it to be the same size as the What's, what's in it, we use a CSS thing called uh, fit content, which just sets width to fit the content. Um, but since GSAP likes hard numbers, like 100% or being 100 pixels to the left, it didn't really like if I just said, go to animate to um, fit content. It was like, what's that? I need a number. So there's, there's two functions we use, from and to. So from will go start at like x300 and say from x0 animate to it. And so we'll just do that automatically. And two, which is the one you'll most likely be using most of the time, says go to x300 from the starting position to something like that. So since we're using fit content and we set um, the what the content is, we say go to that um, width, all the nameplate, the parent element, the name element, the Twitter element, all of it, go from um, the width of zero to what it was, which is fit content. And then four seconds later, we ask for it to go back down to zero. So this one here, by the way, is uh, the time it takes. So it's just one second. If I wanted to take five seconds, I would put in a five there, but that's maybe a bit too long. You, you just have to find a balance, what looks right, what feels right. Ask people what looks right and feels right. Um, and then, so that's that's also the delay of four seconds, as I said. And then we, this tl.call, so at this, after this, uh, after we shorten it all down, after we set the width back to zero, we want to run this function. And this function basically clears um, the what's inside the name element and Twitter element. Um, and then the next uh, function, next line sets um, the width to be nothing. So that's what the empty quotation marks. And set is just basically asking a two to be zero seconds. It's just shorter to write it as one. Um, it took me ages to figure out. I had a bug where it would run once, it would open and close beautifully, and then it wouldn't run again. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me. Spent ages on it asking people. And I found out this is what I had to do because if it started correctly, I just need to reset it all to the start value. But if I did something like width, set width to be fit content, um, it didn't work for some reason, but got it working now. It's all working. And the CSS for it is very simple, uh, fairly simple as well. So set the font, um, 
set the background as red just so I can see if anything's overflowing, which does happen. So you just, since I'm dealing with white and black, I didn't want a white background so I could see the actual white behind the text and black background would just cover the text kind of. So the nameplate, which is like the parent element, position absolute, top, Top, uh, top is 800 pixels down, left 100 pix 175 pixels to the left. Display flex and flex column. Like I said, I love my display flexes. And it basically means sort them vertically. And then overflow hidden basically means any text that goes beyond the width, just cover, just, uh, just hide, just like cut it off there. Um, and then, so the text, these are the two text bubbles. I'll just run it again so you can just reminder so the background is white as you can see the width is fit content which I was talking about padding is the width between the text and the border edge so I just found that it was a bit too squished in there I wanted to space it out pad it a bit overflow hidden is like I said anything beyond the width of the box would still show the text so you just need to cover it white space no wrap basically means if I have a space in there like someone's name um, without that, it would show on two lines since the width's very small. It wants to show on two lines. So that basically means show it on one line and just expand to that one line. Uh, the font size for both of these very self-explanatory, just the size that I've had it as. Letter spacing. Um, I just found the font, the letters were just too close, so I wanted to space them out a bit more. Um, font weight bold. Basically, uh, just, just setting the text as bold. Just emphasize it a bit more. Always want to do that. Set like maybe a little label as a text light or maybe gray it out a little bit and set the actual data as bold and be in your face about that. And margin bottom just basically means it spaces out um, the two elements. I could have done margin top on here. I could have added another element. It's just the way I handled it. Um, that's just been a brief overview. That's and that's yeah, that's literally it. And so it's just been a brief overview over those two elements. Um, you can find it in the link in the description to the GitHub page for this. Um, join the Discord. I don't know what the link is. You'll just have to go to nodecg.com to find it. Um, always willing to help and have more people join in on this. So thank you very much for watching, and I might see you again.